So uh, my name is Nesupa and I'm a photographer, also the graphic designer. But I work full time as a graphic designer in uh, Phnom Penh and I do part time for my photography. And uh, I start my photography since 2010, but start to be active in uh, 2012 and 13 after I graduate. So I study at the Royal University of Fine Art as a graphic designer. But at the same time, I took uh, many short courses that uh, prepared by the school. And uh, I found out one uh, short course from a friend institute called uh, Studio Image. So from there, uh, I start to interested in the photography and I start to practice a lot from, the, from 2010 until 2013. And uh, I found out that uh, photography is one of the medium that I like because at the beginning I thought it's easy to tell the story through because it's just one click and then we can have a image. Actually, at the beginning when I graduated uh, high school, I didn't, know, I didn't know about art. So it's like I know nothing about art. But just because my brother took me to a fine art school, and he asked me to choose a major that I like at that time. So I joined graphic design, but the environment around me, because it's art school, it's uh, full of art activities, sculpture, painting, um, uh, design. Design also part of art, I think, because it's um, always started with a creative idea. And then I, as I mentioned that I joined photography uh, workshop, um, I really like I really like want to to speak through my work and to show something that I want to speak and I don't know how because I like painting I did sometimes painting but then I still choose photography because I, I I feel comfortable to to tell the story through so the reason why I start to do art because I want to speak up my voice to show it into public Actually, what inspired me because I study in fine art school, and what who who inspired me is a teacher at fine art school, and um, also some Cambodian artists. Because when I start my art, I start to do a lot of research and also try to attend many exhibitions as I can, and uh, I like a few few artists. Uh, example like. J.O. he did the portrait and also not just photography but kind of installation as well. And I like uh, Klim, she did the painting, of, he did painting of a woman with a flower and gold bow up. And like people I like, they did portrait and telling the stories through. So yeah, two of them I like, one from photography, one from painting. I start to do my project from what I saw around in the society, in the family, in myself as well. So it's like normally I spend a lot of time to observe the story and to think about it, but not to take photography immediately. It's like I, okay, example, there is one topic I want to talk about, it's about um, gender so i spend a lot of time to think about it like from first day until six months until i can find the way to show it through my artwork like how can i sketch it so i sketch like many different um, composition and then i one day i come to the village i start to suit and then i come back i talk to um, uh, my teacher my friend or other people that they know a bit about art or they don't know as well, just to show them if, if they, they agree or they can get the idea. And after I go back again and try to redo the photography until I like it, so and then I continue the story. So normally I try to think a lot and sketch a lot about the, um, the, the story, but then uh, at the end when I find a way to show it, it's only one week or 10 days or yeah, two weeks only that I took the, the shooting at the end. For me, uh, now, 
art is part of my life, so art is very important for me. I think for the society and for the country, because art is the way that speak about the truth. For me, it's like even way we speak is not very obvious, but we're trying to show up the social issue, the gender, the thing that we want to show. So it's like how how one country or community develop, it will show through art. So for me, art is part of art. Part of my life, part of our community and country. Yeah. So actually, there's one work that I uh, like a lot because this work I went back to my village where I was born, and it's uh, very far remote. So it's like uh, many kids, many people, they don't know about this kind of art, and they even don't know never seen big camera in front of them. <laughs> so one of the area that I like is the leaf. Leaf that I did with the um, remote uh, kid in my village, and they all enjoy and me enjoy as well because when I was there with my camera, I didn't know what to do, but I just feel like I want to do something with them because they always coming surround me and follow me full day, and then they go back home tomorrow. They come back again, so I start to hang out around the village with around ten or fifteen kids. And uh, we start to to do something together, and then at that time, there's one kid uh, took the leaf, and he just paused in front of his face. So it's like during the process, it's not me who come up with the idea. It was one of the kid that inspired me to to do that work. So for me, I very enjoy it, and it's like the object, the people who involved, they are enjoy it as well. Yeah. So actually, that one yes, at the beginning. I know that I want to do something with kid there because in my village it's uh, Kirivung. It's one of the remote village in Takao. It's not so far from the center, but it's 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 remote because there's no electricity, no tap water, and no school. So school is like we have only uh, secondary school at that time. And then we, if we want to continue to um, no, we have only primary school, and we want to continue to secondary school. We have to ride bicycle like nine kilometer from our village, and the road was tough. It's like <laughs> sometimes on the flood season we need to take a boat. It's a palm boat for sure, <laughs> but very hard to access to the secondary school. So like uh, seventy or eighty percent kids they drop off the school. And they decided to go to work as a construction worker, or they go to Thailand because they have no choice. They have to to earn money for their family and for their living. And there's no one that inspire them that they should continue study because they cannot see the um, the value of study or educate. So they follow their family, their brother, their sister. They just drop off the school and. On some money to have their family. It's not their fault. It's not parent fault. For me, it's kind of misunderstand between between the society and uh, and them. It's like them. They cannot see how it's important the education is, and it's like the society or the government. I will say they they don't know about this small problem as well because. They think that um, all the kids now they have the rights to go to school and uh, they can do because they don't need to pay. So not not many people talk about it anymore. So it's being continue and continue until now there. But now we have a secondary school there, so much more better. But for the high school still, and now we have better road. So it's like they can have motorbike and go one day study there and come back. When I when I was study, I was at the seven uh, grade, so I need to to ride bicycle nine kilometer there, and I stay there for one week, and on the weekend I come back. So imagine like very small kids stay for the whole week at the school in a small house next to someone, and we have to cook, we have to clean, we have to go to school. Very tough. So yeah, it's very hard to. To access to education in my village, yeah. So right now I work on a new project. It's uh, I will say it's a little bit political because, <laughs> as I mentioned, that 
art should uh, reflect the the society or the situation that we have now. So my new work, I work on uh, property, so related to land. I started my first research in Comport and I did kind of a small exhibition. It's just a, a start up of work and it's called uh, Land for Self. So I did uh, document the place because in Comport when I was there, I saw many uh, land for sale, land for rent, a lot of signs that pop up on the land and the land is empty, you know, with uh, columns that saying it belongs to someone. And uh, I feel like we are not just selling the land, we are selling our identity. It's like when the villager, they sell the village, they need to move and they will lose the memory, they will lose the neighbor, they will start kind of start new life. I know that it's good for them because they they get more money and maybe they get uh, more chance to grow their business. But uh, for me, yeah, I don't know when the land is come very expensive, like three double, like double and double price. And uh, so what's happened uh, after we sell the land? And if it belongs to someone, what's happened? So my question is like, at some point, I, 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 this work I did in Kampot, but then I, I will extend to Kep, Kokong, Seyanu, and Kampot. So my idea is to, to landscape along the seaside, the province that close to the seaside, because I feel like Cambodia, we are small, and there's only four provinces that's uh, next to the sea size. And now that part is start, start up with some business, big, big project, and uh, it start to change a lot the landscape and people because, because of the new project. And my question is, it's just like, what's happening in the future after we move, after we sell the land, even we get the money, yeah.